today we are fortunate enough to have with us a great mathematician and a beloved teacher professor swadhinananda patnaik professor patnaik is the founder and ex director of institute of mathematics and its application bhubaneswar he was the retired professor of the department of mathematics sambalpur university he completed his phd from stony brook university new york his research interests are operator theory functional analysis fourier analysis relativity and probability theory not only he is having knowledge in mathematics he has also equal knowledge in physics chemistry history and astronomy apart from being a very good mathematician he is also an inspiring teacher professor gadadhar mishra iic bangalore who is a bhatnagar awardee is a student of fame his students are well established not only in all reputed institutions of india like iits iisc imsc and isi but also outside of india also he initiated the annual odisha mathematics olympiad to spot future talent in mathematics of odisha the rural mathematics talent search rmts program was made by him supported by national board of higher mathematics the atomic energy department of atomic energy government of india to search the best mathematical brains of odisha and to nurture the talents in rural areas on earth and i heartily thanking you for accepting our request to deliver a lecture sir on behalf of all our students i am also wishing you a happy teachers day for tomorrow now i am requesting our honorable vice chancellor sir to address the gathering good morning all of you <coughs> uh, this morning, is a very sir. excellent uh, day for gangadhar mayor university because of this uh, uh, extramural lecture series but because of presence of dr swadhin patnaik the doyen of mathematics of the country so i welcome you sir dr patnaik <coughs> so uh, on as i i couldn't get an opportunity to meet you thank you uh, but uh, i had the opportunity to meet your student dr gadadhar misra at uh, pandit ravi shankar shukla university raipur i was the coordinator of inspire program at raipur and at that time i invited him and he was our guest and he was a mesmerizing you know professor yes. and uh, explained mathematics so simply that everybody was impressed to think all the school kids and uh, the senior faculty and the scholars of the university sir your contribution is uh, uh, very great to odisha and uh, you have been uh, guiding students inspiring them and uh, you have guided more than 60 phd students and uh, uh, we uh, i'll request you to uh, shower your blessings on gangadhar mayor university the faculty of gangadhar mayor university in mathematics department and the students of gangadhar mayor university so that they they become very competent in the field of mathematics so you know that mathematics usually you know people think that it's a very difficult subject uh, because i am a biologist i uh, my thinking is also like that so and uh, now this complex you know the fear complex has to be removed from the minds of the students of odisha and uh, you have been playing a great role in doing that so i welcome you sir and uh, uh, we are very happy and obliged to you and on behalf of gangadhar mayor university uh, i just uh, pay my regards and uh, gratitude to you sir and uh, please uh, go ahead and formally i inaugurate this uh, Uh, you know extramural lecture series and uh, beginning with you sir thank you very much so in between i think uh, we'll just request our uh, deputy registrar sir uma sir to say a few words uh, thank you uh, esteemed vice chancellor sir our respected uh, chief guest and chief speaker uh, professor swadhin patnaik sir namaskar sir uh, namaskar on behalf of the jm university i welcome uh, patnaik sir to this extramural like a great beginning when you get a great personality like uh, patnaik sir and uh, we are thankful to uh, madam vijayalakshmi panigrahi and the whole team of mathematics for organizing this lecture and you are starting with a great personality uh, like patnaik sir 
uh, thank you very much and on behalf of the jm university our good wishes are with you uh, just one line i want to say about uh, professor patnaik sir uh, when i was a student of uh, the school of economics department of economics of sambalpur university in the 90s i was doing my post graduation uh, two prominent personalities uh, were dominating the entire academic scene of uh, the state of odisha very prominent personalities uh, professor swadin patnaik sir and uh, professor r s rao sir from the department of economics and these two for great personalities great academician of all time they have shaped the uh, academic ecosystem of the state of odisha uh, so it is a very fortunate moment very blessed moment for me uh, to be associated with such a program such a lecture where professor patnaik sir is addressing our students thank you so much sir for accepting the invitation of our honorable vice chancellor and sparing your valuable time for the benefit of our students and teachers i welcome you again sir thank you and as our vice chancellor requested you sir please please uh, continue blessing our department of mathematics mathematics all the faculty and students in mathematics uh, so that so that uh, they will enrich themselves uh, by taking inputs from you sir thank you very much and namaskar sir namaskar thank you sir now i am requesting professor sadin sir to okay good morning Honorable Vice Chancellor and other faculty, staff, and students, it's a great occasion for me to speak to the students of Sambalpur. Incidentally, I spent most of my active life in in Western Odisha. In Sambalpur itself, it was more than quarter century. and also a part of it in route kala so i all i love speaking to audience in western odisha whenever i find an opportunity i take the opportunity and this one is i would say is a lucky chance for me to interact if the corona virus were not there i would personally travel uh, to sambalpur okay now coming to the topic what i have chosen is mathematics shapes the civilization now as everybody knows homo sapiens the sapati would know it better evolved some millions of years ago and what was he doing his only way of survival was hunting and gathering in those days he had hardly any use for numbers or even if he had he did have words for it for example the divachan in sanskrit shows i mean he was able to distinguish in early days between 1 and 2 and after that it was too confusing so call it many so 1 2 and many this is not only in sanskrit it is in many old languages many classical languages like greek classical greek classical irish classical um, russian even now there are tribes which do not count more than 2 there is a tribe in amazon valley called munduruku they count only up to 2 and beyond that they say many so that is how it is that is because the necessity was to that extent limited but <coughs> but when from the hunting and food gathering he found it useful to capture and domesticate it so that he doesn't have to always run after and hunt, hunting and so and then that is where he started 
enumerating them because how many animals he has with him. Initially, what he used to do was put a stone against every animal he had. And when the animals went to grazing, he used to put uh, cast aside one by one for every animal that went for grazing. What? When they returned again, they did cast them one by one and showed, I mean, found how many have returned. And if there are some uh, stones were left over, that means some animal has not returned. That is how it was. But stones gather in heaps that are still available, even archaeologists have discovered in caves, which perhaps tells us that this is how they were keeping numbers. But that was too ephemeral to keep count, keep um, track, because sometimes they may be lost. Then he started drawing lines, etching lines on wood or bone. Some animal bones have been discovered, which are as old as 40,000 years old, where there are lines drawn at interval of five. And that was how you to keep track of numbers. This was when he had to he go, went from hunting food gathering to a nomad, nomad life also was quite hard because he had to go graze the cattle, graze these animals in newer and newer pasture, pastures till he came across some river valleys like Mesopotamia. That is where you find the first civilizations. And of course, of late, they have discovered another valley like Indus Valley called the Bolan Valley, which is a little west of the Indus Valley civilization. And they have been dated to be about, Indus Valley is about 200, 2000 to 3000 BC, and Bolan Valley up to 8000 8, BC. Mesopotamia, we know, is the same. Egypt also, we know. But something which is very interesting, which we find there, is there, that is where they knew how to make bricks. And bricks were very well shaped. They're all rectangular parallel biped or cubes. That means every angle has to be a right angle. And that is where he invented what we now call as the Pythagoras theorem. In fact, Babylonian clay tablets have been discovered with a list of numbers like this, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 15, 8, 17, Likewise, what are they doing with it? They're certainly, they knew that if you form a triangle with this or these are sides, it is going to be a right angle triangle. Hence, how to make a right angle was there. In fact, the Babylonian clay tablets is a proof. Indus Valley civilization, unfortunately, we don't know. We have not deciphered the inscriptions there. But nevertheless, 
what happened was at least a thousand years after indus valley sulva sutra which is now extant and available apastamba bodhayana's contribution they had also the same principle of governing the sides of a right angle triangle so that's again tells you why they had these things even pyramid they the thing is they wanted a pyramids base to be a square and how do they how do they do it they have found egyptians have found uh, cords knotted at a units of 3 4 and 5 so that if you make it a triangle and stretch it it becomes a right angle triangle so that is where man moved from numbers i mean how to relate numbers to shapes because shapes were already people man must have seen shape round straight like that but relating shapes to number was a, an important contribution in advance to our civilization and then is to do the farming farming um uh, for that farming because the, till that time he never grew his own food he used to gather but now he was doing farming now with that farming he found it is dependent on the weather conditions and he found that after 12 full moons the weather conditions more or less return that is how he used to keep time that if it was raining or it was a certain weather now so he used to have that kind of calendar but soon it was found that it doesn't work because maybe after 12 full moons you should have returning of the weather condition then you should expect after 24 full moons after 36 after 48 after 72 and like that and it was found after 72 full moons the weather conditions substantially changed that means that the full moon to full moon was not a proper way of keeping time so egyptians found because by that time they have been observing the sky very carefully because like moon there are other bright objects in the sky the next bright object after sun and moon is sirius sirius is a star which is a little brighter than the jupiter which we see and the sirius it was found that sirius appears when the sirius appears exactly at the horizon during the daybreak that is flooding of nile now flooding of nile and this uh, this series appearing exactly at the horizon was occurring in 365 days not in 354 days 
as was with full moon to full moon calculation so so egyptians suggested had a revised calendar in which they used to have 30 days in a month and five extra days they were to call the mass festival days that is how they had the astronomy and by that time they had also started observing other stars in the sky they found that if you observe a star you observe a star if you observe a star at certain point in the sky at certain time then it will reappear exactly in the sky exactly after 20 56 minutes and 4 seconds so which means that exactly about there is a delay of 4 minutes not exactly it is 3 minutes 54 seconds 56 seconds Del not delay i mean advance of appearance of a star in the sky so but another interesting thing is there are five of them which did not obey this rule and since they did not obey this rule they were called planets planets in greek means wanderer so now stars planets and the sky become necessity for uh, necessity for him for his day to day life for his organizing the arming and other things which even now we are follow, following that our puspuni our ganesh puja and things of like that it occurs that way now the interesting thing is that till now numbers were related to shapes now shapes are related to motion now like motion of stars planets moon etc so sun so now that is how with these new inventions like astronomy and geometry and numbers man progress further then well i can go on, on with later that then came a period as to have what to call as a model of the universe how does the universe look like and how is it model ptolemy a greek astronomer had the idea that universe is like a globe at the center of which is the earth then stars planets sun everything goes around in that explaining the motion of planets was not possible within that model 
So they invented some other new parameters called epicycles. That means they are going around Earth, no doubt. But they are also going around, spiraling around the orbit itself. A very complicated situation. But those things were put into mathematics for calculation. And in fact, interesting thing to mention from a mathematician called Art, who suggested for the first time that the diurnal motion of stars, planets, sun is because of rotation of Earth around its own, own axis. He tells in so many words that like uh, like the when you travel in a boat in a river you find the trees and other things on the bank traveling in the opposite direction that is how this thing is happening that means he was clear about the relative motion but for some strange reason his followers like those who followed him later like Varamira Brahmagupta, even Bhaskaracharya, they did not accept rotation of earth. And it stayed on. But anyway, that's another issue. But then, in Europe, in Poland, there was a person called Copernicus, who suggested this epicycles and other things is a very complicated situation. So instead, Let's change the model, make it a heliocentric model, where the sun is at the center, around which Earth and other planets go around. That made the calculation easier and prediction more accurate. But unfortunately, the clergy, the particular the Pope at that time, thought it is blasphemy, it is... Uh, not to be popularized, so they, they made saw to it that it was never published and it, when it was published, they had already written a big forward to that, 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 okay, this is an alternative hypothesis, but we don't, the church doesn't agree with it. And Copernicus saw the published copy on his deathbed. And so, those people who tried to propagate that theory were killed, jailed, and hounded. Bruno was burnt to death because he propounded that Earth is going around the sun. Galileo was imprisoned for life in his house. But somehow, Kepler was lucky because he was outside the influence of Pope and he published his findings from his observation. There's a big story around it, but anyway, to cut short the story. So, and there they had those three famous Laws of Kepler. The Earth is the Sun, the solar system. One of the foci of the ellipses in all planets. Galileo died in 1642 and Newton was born the same year and for Newton they had already 
all these things experiences before him and newton was born in england and england by that time was outside the influence of pope long before that pope and henry 8 fought and newton uh, the henry 8 declared that that this is my jurisdiction so pope has nothing to say here so because of the liberal atmosphere newton pursued from where <coughs> galileo left now the thing is law of falling bodies which galileo formulated very carefully he observed falling of bodies he went up the tower of living tower of pisa to drop two balls to show that the heavy ball and light ball both arrive at the same time contradicting aristotle's dictum that heavier bodies fall faster than the lighter bodies all these things in spite of all these things galileo never seemed to have asked the question why does the apple or anybody fall at all and how is that if you look at works of galileo you'll find so carefully he had observed falling of bodies he told this distance traveled by a body is proportional to square of the time for which it has traveled which you now got as half gt square how could he do that and he could do it by observation but he never asked why a body is falling and newton was the one who asked this and why this is a very ticklish question very interesting question newton also formulated what you call as laws of motion the law of inertia the laws of inertia the first law says if a body is at rest unless an external force acts on it it will not change to state of motion now force as an external agency of change of state of inertia was the first time it was recognized by newton in his laws of motion that is a sharp break from the what was happening before so if that, that is what what he, was, he believes in firmly then obviously somebody will ask why did the apple fall because apple was at rest what is the external force which is moving it downwards because from rest state of rest to state of motion it has to come through an external force where is it so he had to invent if at all the law of gravity this is a very interesting point which many times not mentioned that it is his law of inertia which led him to law of gravity and another interesting thing is to study all these things the mathematics that was available was not sufficient so he developed what you call as calculus some 400 years before newton but he didn't go far he, he didn't have inertia uh, so and for some strange reason those who followed bhaskar later on they somehow switched from differential calculus to integral calculus and that's another issue i mean I, it will take itself one full day to discuss but thing is invention of calculus which was done by newton 
and simultaneously by another person called Leibniz in Europe. And that made facilitated people to understand motion very well. And then it was applied to many things, including vibration of strings and even propagation of heat conduction. And that led to many areas of mathematics and also that made it easier for people to understand the nature better and bend nature to their advantage wherever possible. So all the inventions like steam engine, railways, etc. occurred after that. So you see the way these inventions change civilization, I mean, I don't have to recount them. Now, then, after new, by the Newton's time, people had known about gravity, uh, about magnetism, and Newton somehow thought that magnetic force of attraction is not same like the gravitational force of attraction. He knew that. Then came the static electricity. Then, so static force of attraction and repulsion. That is something interesting that the repulsion is something which is not between gravitating bodies, between heavy bodies. So now, gradually, people started looking at charges and magnets and how they're related. Faraday showed how to generate electricity by motion of coils near a magnet. Ampere showed the other way. That means how to create magnets or what, how magnet fields are created by electric currents. And there was another person called Gauss, who was also a great mathematician. He also had something to do with the distribution of charges in a particular conduct conductor. And that's how we have this Gauss theorem. Gauss. Now, all these discoveries you can see they, they are called Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations were just four equations, differential equations. Now, from those differential equations, by, one can derive that electric field and the mag magnetic field spread like waves. That means one could spread, send electromagnetic waves across empty space without any conductor. Initially, people thought it is all mathematical jargon. It is not a possibility. But eventually, Hertz, Heinrich Hertz in Germany, demonstrated actually electromagnetic waves do exist. Later on, of course, Marconi and others, they took it further. But imagine if we dismissed Maxwell's equation as just a mathematical exercise having no practical use, we would never have the radio, television, even this mechanism through which I'm talking would, be, would not be possible. <clears throat> so now, then Maxwell also did some other things about understanding of the how gases, the, the law, gas laws, laws of 
I mean, like the Boyle's law, Charles' law, and why it occurs that way. He got it as a true statistical analysis of gas molecules. And that's why we have the so called Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. Boltzmann was another person. And like that, you no. Know, and but what happened? It was found that Maxwell's equations. are not quite compatible with the Newton's equations. That means if you write, if you look at the laws of motion inside a moving board, moving as per Newton. But whereas the Maxwell's equations don't remain invariant under the Galilean transformation that is, which takes care of moving bodies. And people went after it. And it was again, after a great effort, two people, one was Albert Einstein, another was Henry Poincaré. Henry Poincaré was a mathematician and Albert Einstein was a physicist. Both of them showed that the Galilean transformation is no more, is not really the transformation governing the bodies, the motion of bodies. Now, in fact, Einstein's two papers which made him what he became were entitled electrodynamics of moving bodies. And through that, he got that famous equation E equal to mc squared. Now, this is how people, uh, the, and E equal to mc squared, unfortunately, was also used to nuke Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But whatever it is, that is use of, uh, uh, use or misuse of new discoveries. Now, but the thing is, now, with this, Einstein also discovered what you call as photoelectric effect. I mean, rather not discovered, it was known. But he had, he knew the law governing the photoelectric effect. And also, laws governing Brownian motion. You see, the three different fields, his contribution. Now, because of Einstein's work, we were able to find, calculate the Avogadro's number and also understand the photoelectric effect. Now, but then there are some things occurring in physics that till the end of 19th century, people thought atoms are the indivisible. There is nothing smaller than atom. So, but works of J.J. Thompson show there is something different. There is a particle called electron which is emitted from at atoms. That means atoms must be have, must have some atomic particles. And how is it? How is an atom? Uh, how does an atom look like? So his original model was because atom is neutral and electrons are negatively charged. So he suggested atom is like a pudding, which is uh, um, all positive charge. And 
electrons are sitting on it like plumb so it is a plumb pudding model and people didn't question it because there's nothing contradicted it but work of rutherford showed this is not true there is a lot of i mean there is great distance between the electron and the positive is part of the atom which he called as the nucleus now then how do they manage themselves it is one is positive other is negative he said well they go around it just like earth goes around the sun but it is not to be because if a charged particle is accelerated it must radiate that means if it is going around certain thing it will radiate that means energy will come down and if it comes down what happens eventually it will fall so how can atom be stable so that is where people have started looking at the whole idea afresh and that is where bohr niels bohr later on his collaborators or rather younger colleagues like heisenberg schrodinger they had a new model or new idea about describing particles waves etc where they said it is not proper to ask where the particle is at which time all that you should ask is what's the probability of getting the particle within this uh, volume at this time so that means and using that they had the uh, eisenberg famous uncertainty principle which says that you cannot measure certain quantities simultaneously with the accuracy if you measure the momentum of a particle very accurately and the its position will become very in, in, inaccurate and vice versa so that is where what we call as heisenberg's uncertainty principle now from the deterministic model of the universe we move to what you call as a probabilistic model which einstein very much objected he said well does glare dice but his uh, reply to them by bohr was what god does we don't know we cannot dictate that you play a dice or not but anyway that's by the way but the thing is then probability became a very important area to understand the laws of nature ironically einstein also had this same probability used in his brownian motion but somehow he didn't couldn't accept quite accept the probabilistic model for quantum mechanics and but until his but anyway that is one part of the story but einstein also perceived certain thing he said okay mechanics and electricity have been reconciled let's see that is how of toil of relativity um, where he showed uh, that a light passing by via sun i'm just close to sun would bend under the influence of gravity and he calculated it will be so many seconds and 
but it can be observed only on and low solar eclipse days when it is total solar eclipse and people traveled to places where those sort of solar eclipse would occur in 1920 to observe and found the whatever calculation he did on prediction came to true which now so and this is kind of unification of gravity um, electromagnetism but Einstein for a long time was looking for an unified field theory which he could not do till the end and we still don't know and now the physicists are still looking for GOT grand unification theory but it's not yet done it will take a while or maybe it will never be, never come but you see as you can see that at every stage to understand the nature you need mathematics and by our knowledge of mathematics we understand nature and our understanding of nature our attitude towards nature also changes and also hence our civilization grows so civilization has, i mean i could tell many more things because uh, this is not a place to do because i wouldn't have time for for example when all this calculus was being developed some people found some flaws in their life logic and that not until 19th century those flaws were plucked but then even those were found to be defective there are some logicians who showed that there will be inherent contradiction in all your axiomatic approach and there is one logician called Gödel who proposed certain um, um, certain hypothesis that what is called undecidability. Now, then he also had certain predictions or certain questions to prove those questions. There's an English mathematician called Turing, Alan Turing, who you, you who who designed what you call as a theoretical machine called the Turing machine. Every computer scientist knows what is a Turing machine. And Turing machine is no particular machine. It is not a physical object. But he said, suppose we had this, we had this had this had this then what you will be able to get and using that he was able to decide certain thing and actually those ideas of Turing and post were put into practice by John von Neumann which led to what you call as the ubiquitous computers which you see everywhere and the latest is uh, what a part of uh, computer science mathematics you call it anyway so of how mathematics is shaping the civilization from stone age to farming to mechanical uh, it's models, electricity, electro, electro, electronics, electromagnetism, until we come to this place. So every everywhere mathematics has shaped mathematics uh, civilization very ably and definitely. In fact, at uh, one point of time in Greece, about 4th century BC or 5th century BC there was a 
an administrator who made it compulsory for every Greek to learn arithmetic, which is said that their numbers in at rest. Then music, which is said were numbers in motion. Geometry, which, which is called as shapes at rest and astronomy, which is shapes in motion. And every Greek citizen must learn this. And in fact, that is how the, how the whole curriculum and education policy are, have evolved. Now, uh, you see, uh, this is, we have come to this stage. Now, at every stage, we need such deep understanding of our society and we'll use all tools to understand and to make our civilization more stable and not an unstable civilization which is to threaten our climate to threaten our sea level and things are like so now uh, now that I, if there are questions i'm willing to answer them sir it is a nice lecture sir thank you it was from the beginning yeah. to, uh, totally to the end a any students so, if you have any doubts um, at every stage you have shown how mathematics has played a role yes sir. yes Yes, sir, and yes, sir and wants to ask something. Sir, sir I have a question. Yeah. Why Galileo could not discover not, all the laws? I can hear you. All the laws of Musa. Yes, tell me. Hello, why Galileo could not discover all the laws of Musa? That's the point. Because, because Newton only is, completed. He had to fall. Galileo had idea of second law. No, you see. He, what extra development yes. was there so that the Newton could is, do it? Till Galileo's time, people did not. Huh? I I don't understand what you're saying. The, the people didn't have a clear-cut idea about what you call as force, because in our ordinary parlance, sometimes we say a dynamic man a forceful man, an energetic man, almost as synonyms, but they're not. So that was how it was. The society was like that. Till that time, people believed a body moves because there's a force on it and we withdraw the force, it stops. So, but that is where Newton made the fundamental difference. Let's say, to say that to change the state of motion, you need an external force. And force was not properly understood till his time. Anyone else, students? From the student side? You want to ask anything? You didn't ask anything. <laughs> I, have not, I have not been successful. If I have not raised questions, then I have not been successful. Mm -hmm. Only if it raises certain questions in minds of people. What's the point? What's the use of this? Yes, sir. Well, I'm willing. I'm willing. And if they cannot formulate a question even now, let them formulate that and write it to me they have my address email id my whatsapp number they can use it but anyway but it's good if they ask it face to face yes sir, uh, sir this is srinivas <laughs> namaskar sir namaskar namaskar sir. sir mu srinivas pouchi namaskar uh, 
actually it, it, this was a wonderful talk and uh, you know you have given the entire history and uh, development of uh, science so it will take quite some time for students to kind of formulate questions your talk was well received and it is not that they have not understood yeah. uh, but it will take time to formulate questions yeah, sure, sure. So it's an entire history it is the civilization and the development and all these things so so it's not that you have failed i mean you have been yeah. saying this uh, since uh, yeah. last fact, 60 years so fact, every I time understand. you give a talk <laughs> so it was a wonderful talk sir so but there is one thing yeah. <laughs> unification of you know all these forces you know the study of unified yeah. theory and all so how much has it, uh, has it been unified you know i mean is there one theory yeah. which unifies everything No, it has not come. It not come. Ah. The G U T grand unification theory has not come. Somehow, you see, for example, among the forces, we have weak forces. The in electromagnetic forces and gravity. Forces, weak forces, you know, by this weak interaction of like beta decay and other things, and electromagnetic forces. We know what happens between the nucleus proton stays with another proton without repelling, because positive charges, like charges, should repel. so they have another force called nuclear force which yukawa proposed that it is a short range force but very strong and that that occurs via a particle called meson which we now know as pi meson yukawa the japanese scientist but then all these things don't fall into one the abdul salam and uh, others i'm forgetting the name yeah they had a unification of weak and electromagnetic forces somehow electro weak uh, unification but beyond that nothing has been achieved and gravitation is, is still uh, way uh, way away to be achieved okay so okay okay sir thank you sir this is new question i have a clarification hello hello yeah hello hello i, I have a clarification what srinivas asks is uh, hello there are articles these days people believe the non commutative geometry discovered by alan cones and his team may have a answer in unifying all the four though three are already united three forces have been unified unified and that is called the standard model gravitation is not unified people believe non commutative geometry will have some <coughs> Say in that, that is how they have used uh, Dirac operator to define a distance. I think Sas' voice is now not audible. Yeah, who's Niyaz? My uh, voice. Niyaz' voice. Yes, sir, your voice is audible. Okay. No. Okay. Then anyway, if Niyaz has a question, he can write to me by WhatsApp. Yes, sir. Sir, I have some answer. Sir, yes, sir. Some answer. Rahul, okay, yes. Rahul. Sir, my question is that why Newton gets the credit of calculus, although Bhaskar has created hundred years before the Newton? Yes, not hundred years, four hundred years. Four hundred years. Okay, sir. 
Yes. Yeah, but unfortunately, it didn't travel. It didn't travel in the sense Bhaskara has the, you know, I have read it, that he word called Tatkalika Dati. Tatkalika Dati means instantaneous velocity, speed. Now, to have instantaneous speed, you must have calculus. Otherwise, it will be x t minus x t 0 by t minus t 0 that will be average velocity. Uh, average speed. But he had instant speed and he knew he didn't have dx by d showed cosine differentiated gives you sine, sine shaded gives you cosine. These things he knew. But unfortunately, this didn't travel further. Kerala school took over and they made a great contribution. But that is more on integral calculus. They discovered the Gregory series 300 years before Gregory. They discovered the sine cosine series. Some 200 years before that, um, the McLaurin's theorem. Not that it was, was not available. But unfortunately, in India, it didn't spread. See this uh, Madhava was in the fourteenth century to fifteenth century AD. Our Patani Samanta was nineteenth century. But then something called proposed a model. But Nandilakant, of course, would not infer that uh, our Samantha Chandrasekhar or Patani Samantha comes to the same model independently. But somehow he never mentions or he is not aware. And if you are aware, then you would have made, made a better um, job of the thing. But that is something which is a weakness of our society where we don't spread uh, what we know. For example, I'll tell you that Euclid's elements, I didn't mention about it, but I should have. They were in Alexandria. Alexandria library was burned twice. First time by the Christians, second time by the Arabs. Yet, all, all the 13 Euclid elements were available because they had multiple copies. So, if, even if they, they burn the library, still they could re organize them and copy them again available but we didn't do like that unfortunately we didn't yeah rahul have i answered your question or you want it in odia i can tell you in odia i know odia how very much <laughs> yes sir i got it me Huh? Did they pass away like that? 
some more students also asking want to ask Rahul, some Rahul, Rahul. Rahul? Rahul? yes yes sir can i am in german university sir Hmm. Rahul? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. You are a graduate student, MBSC or a PG student? PG final year, ma'am. PG final year. You can go to job. GM. GM in what you do? Acha. Acha. PG final. No, UG yep. finance. Good. Bablu, someone want to ask sir. related to Heisenberg on yes. certain day. You ask. Huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a question, sir. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Sir, uh, actually, sir, I have a question. Uh, Bablu, sir. Actually, sir, you yeah, said you we yes, can, I can predict the exact position of a quantum particle by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So also it results that uh, the same particle can be present in multiple places. So is there uh, any chance or is there any extra dimension that played a role with it? Because I have uh, uh, no, I know little about the string theory that uh, it tells us there are more than three dimensions. So what are your views? Yeah. More well, than three dimensions were already uh, done by the time of Einstein. At least Einstein's after Einstein's Lorentz transformation, yeah. this uh, Minkowski suggests that time is the fourth dimension, yeah. and uh, ultimately it was this. Initially, Einstein didn't like the idea of fourth dimension, but he accepted it, and only. When he accepted, he got his curvature of the space-time, which gave gravitation. And now we have an eleven-dimensional theory to understand. It is not three-dimensional or four. It is eleven-dimensional theory. It's quite involved, but it is. Good. What are you doing, Bablu? Sir, I'm doing MPhil in mathematics. Can I can't go to Porto. GM University, sir. Mathematics. Can I go to Hello? Sir? Hello? Huh? Sir? Am I audible, sir? Mathematics, go to Porto. Yeah. Sir, mathematics. GM University, sir. Because next time, you can go to the car. I'm going to go to the car. BSc can't go to MPhil, sir. MPhil. PG mathematics. Yes, MPhil. MPhil, sir. Oh. MPhil. Sir, you are Sir. Thank you, sir. MPhil. Sir. Thank uh, you. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, question. Uh, actually, question is okay. there. Sir, hello. Yes, you ask. Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. You ask the question. Sir, the uh, mm -hmm. Heisenberg uncertainty principle goes to the uh -huh. quantum particle multiple jar. Uh -huh. Same particle multiple jar. Uh -huh. We can predict the exact position of a particle. So uh, maybe there are some extra dimension in the quantum level, maybe 11 dimension. Yeah, then if you do, if you tell the exact, locate the exact position of a particle. Sir. Then what will be its momentum? You cannot say, sir, because the error you commit in getting the momentum, sir, multiplied by error you commit by getting the position, the product is more than or equal to h by two. Yes, sir. H is the Planck's constant, which is very small. For our gross purpose, yes, but for smaller dimensions, smaller quantities like mass of electron, etc., position of electron. What is what are you writing your thesis on? 
কেন তো তুমি থিসিস লিখবো স্যার ম্যাথমেটিক্স ম্যাথমেটিক্স এর স্যার ম্যাথমেটিক্স আই এম লুকিং ফর টু পিএইচডি ইন ম্যাথমেটিক্স ইন ফাংশনাল অ্যানালাইসিস কেন এরিয়ারে করবো পিএইচডি ফাংশনাল অ্যানালাইসিস স্যার অ্যানালাইসিস হ্যাঁ স্যার বড়িয়া কথা ঠিক আছে স্যার থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার ঠিক <laughs> 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 question you are asking me or you are asking the students and the students uh, students i have many questions of course uh, <laughs> students yes pramod sir apan kis pachare pe chao chandi ki understand that uh, abstract um, sir uh, relation function and uh, for your series and different series comes and that abstractness of mathematics is uh, gradually yeah. increases sir how to sir uh, visualize uh, students in uh, uh, that concept you see sir, that's the point my question because initially but only thing is now let's say you should be telling us what is uh, what is what let's say we are talking about a function what is it the function is something which you cannot avoid yes sir okay right so then only if you know a function then you can talk of its derivative other if function is just a formula then not all functions have formula like this if they had then it's good but we don't know for example let's say solubility of a substance sir depends on temperature but how much we don't know that we don't know the formula but we know that it is given a temperature there is a solubility so i mean it i'm first the abstraction is being thought of as an anathema to practice but it is it is because of abstraction that we could uh, come to where we have come in mathematics 
Do you understand that? That if you didn't have abstraction, sir, man wouldn't have progressed so far in mathematics. And for example, from numbers, relating numbers to shapes, shapes to motion, motion to number, and so becomes more <coughs> necessary to understand the situation. Yes, sir. There was a saying in our days called as difficult as the binomial theorem. But we know binomial theorem is no more difficult to us. But when it was proposed, people thought it's a very hard thing. Hi, secondary, PSC or MSC or what? Hello? Anu? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Saura Panda. Yes, sir. Are you in higher secondary or BSc or no, MSc? Sir. sir, I have completed my MSc. Uh, uh, where? Sir, sir from Gangadhar Main University, sir. Uh, sir, from, MSc? from GM, sir. What? Mathematics, Mathematics? sir. Yes, sir. Mathematics? Huh? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. So, then you, you should tell whether tale ekhan abstraction ke na dorkar hunchi sir abstraction sir sir dorkar sir dorkar hi haba sir function ta hi sir abstract hoche function ta ame bujhle je differentiability continuity ke jimma baki sir se jinish ta sir that's right ha sir se jinish ta ame ha sir बाकी से जिनिस्टा कतरा जगह रे बुझवार लगी सर डिफिकल्ट लेसी अर सर सेटा फिर छुआ के सर बुझावार से सर स्टूडेंट सेटा फिर केनता की बुझे परमा सेटा सर बहुत बहुत टे जगह रे सर डिफिकल्टीज हसी जेंटा की रटवा के भी पड़सी सर सेटा सत कथा सर केतेटा जगह रे रटवार कथा नहु से बाकी आमे जेंटा बुझी नाही परसु सेटा बाध्य होई की सर घुसी देसु और लिखी देसु एग्जाम रे इटा हसी सर बोले से जिनिस्टा जेंटा आमे नाही बुझी परवार की काना सर जेंटा केंती बुझी की सर पिला के बुझे हेबा से जिनिस्टा सर नाही नाही रट रट बात नाही 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 सर रट बात हां सर रट बात नहु है सर बाकी केतेटा कांसेप्ट सर एते एब्स्ट्रैक्ट हसी की मोर इज अ फॉलोइंग बॉडी तमें उतरे ए जिनिस्टा इता है जे वी नीड टू रिलेट टू थिंग्स टाइम एंड डिस्टेंस एंड हाउ टू डू इट यदि केनसी गोटे माने सूत्र मिली गला तो फार्मूला अच्छे बोले बहुत बढ़िया सर अरे से फार्मूला एक्सपेरिमेंट करी 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 देखा ले फॉर्मूला अल्टीमेटली से एक्सपेरिमेंट करी देखले जेंटा न्यूटन देखले डिराइव करी होते कैलकुलस यूज कर आउ 
କଣ ଅଛି ସ୍ମୃତି କହୁଥିଲି ଦେଖ ଗୋଟେ କଥା କହୁଛେ ଗୋଟେ ଗୋଟେ ପ୍ରଶ୍ନ ଦଉଛେ ସ୍ମୃତି ରଞ୍ଜନ ଜାଣିପାରୁନାହାନ୍ତି ତାପରେ ନବେ ବର୍ଷ ହେଇଥିଲା ଆଉ ତାକୁ ସତୁରି କେଜି ହେଇଥିଲା ପ୍ରମାଣ କର ଯେ ତାର ଓଜନ ଯେତିକି ତାର ବୟସ ସେତିକି ହେଇଥିଲା ବୁଝିପାରିଲ କରିପାରିବ ଜନ୍ମ ହେଲା ବେଳକୁ ତାକୁ ସାଢେ ତିନି କେଜି ହେଇଥିଲା ହେଲା ମଲା ବେଳକୁ ତାକୁ ସତୁରି କେଜି ହେଇଥିଲା ତାର ବୟସ ହେଇଥିଲା ନବେ ଗୋଟେ ସମୟରେ ନିଶ୍ଚୟ ତାର ଓଜନ ଯେତିକି ହେଇଥିଲା ବୟସ ସେତିକି ହେଇଥିଲା ମାନେ କେଜିରେ ଏତିକି ମାନେ ପାଣି ଯେତିକି ହେଇଥିବ ବୟସ ବି ସେତିକି ହେଇଥିବ ବର୍ଷ ହେଇଥିବ ଦେଖ ମୁଁ କହୁଛୁ 
माने वेट इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ टाइम डब्ल्यू टी ओके डब्ल्यू ऑफ टी दर वेट वेट एट द टाइम टी कंटिन्यू फंक्शन ऑफ टाइम है ला डब्ल्यू टी माइनस टी को एफ टी लगा देव ठीक है सर हम्म हाँ एफ टी इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू टी माइनस टी है ला तो एफ जीरो के तहत ठीक है सर डब्ल्यू जीरो माइनस जीरो थ्री पॉइंट फाइव थ्री पॉइंट फाइव एफ नाइन है कि नहीं ना बर्तमान देख गोटे पजिटिव एट जीरो नाइंटी एफ टी एफ से जीरो मान डब्ल्यू टी टू टी सर है सर एनालिसिस लागि लागि नै कन्टीन्यूटी कथा लागि लागि नै कन्टीन्यूअस फंक्शन होले एम जेई परबो नै कन्टीन्यूटी न होले त जस्ट लाइक इन फिक्स पॉइंट माने गोटे एफ रो यदि वेट फंक्शन रो को जगह रे फिक्स रो छि सेही हिसाब रे एटा बाहर जे सर कोन हला मतलब सर वेट फंक्शन रो को जगह रे फिक्स रो छि एफ सी इज इक्वल टू ए डब्ल्यू सी इज इक्वल टू सी कष्ट एमएससी पढ़ी जो वही है वो जे गिवन एनी टाइम एटलिस्ट टू पॉइंट्स ऑन अर्थ टू डिस्टिंग पॉइंट्स ऑन अर्थ वेयर द टेंपरेचर इज द सेम अतिक केन और सी मैं कोई नहीं पा रहे कोट या अच्छी कोई परिवर्तन नहीं है किंतु निश्चय डिस्टिंग्ट पॉइंट अच्छी जो टेम्परेचर टाइम जगह निश्चय थी थर्टी सेवेन कर फंक्शन ऑफ़ थ्री वेरिएबल में क्यों करेंगे वो बोलिएगा ना करेंगे पहले किसने और ये मतलब अच्छा करेंगे फोन नंबर नहीं है जो मैडम मोटू मतलब फोन करेंगे अच्छा ना अच्छा तो ओ जाए ऐसे बनो फिजिकली जाए तो अपने कहीं ना जो ऐसे ही तो वर्तमान कौन होगा? Temperature as a function of the position on Earth. Position, okay. It varies from point to point. Okay. अच्छा. Hmm. So is it not a continuous function? <coughs> Because it will change. The place a little, the temperature also changes. Nine. Okay. Hello. Nine. 
image of the entire earth under this function temperature would be compact set in the linear compact set rest can dekha jante sir closed mane closed and bounded interval in uh, r closed bounded closed bounded yes, sir. sets yes sir hala i guess sir tapre continuous map je to connect connected ko connected na ko mane tame it will be an interval connected yes sir 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 interval okay sir so <coughs> image will be an interval <coughs> one to one so interval of put up and then the pre image out account ji here sphere okay some point will go to that middle okay, sir now if you remove these two tale kon the sphere will remain connected but the image becomes disconnected thank you is it possible no sir sphere will remain connected function is continuous so image need to be con connected हाउ नी नहीं सर हाउ नी सामने हाउ कंटेंशन दैट इन द मैप शुड बी वन टू वन इज फॉल्स यस सर है ना हाउ नी कैसे वन टू वन नो हाउ वन है दैल बी टू देर इज टू डिस्टिंग पॉइंट वेर देर इज टेल देखो How do you like this? Say continuity, say topology, say compactness. How will like it? The whole thing. I guess it. Kine? I guess it. I guess. The whole thing. The question of how many things. आओ कौन आओ का अरे जी चच जी पचाई दो आरोप थैंक यू सर आई थिंक सर किसी दिन सर साम सांडे पर नहीं छाड़ी दोगा जाता हेलो हाँ नहीं सुना जाओ जी यस यस एंड करिबा वेट वेट स्मृति स्मृति रंजन मसाउ टिके स्पीकर ऑन कर टिके हाँ हाँ सर ऑन ऑन ऑफ सो वील हैव एनदर टॉक एक्चुअली ऑन संडे कैन एम ऑल द मैथमेटिक स्टूडेंट्स कैन जॉइन एंड आस्क द क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू मैथमेटिक्स or your uh, any doubts if you have you can ask on that day also i i will send the link and um, before that um i think uh, now i'll uh, request that uh, yudhishthir jamdulla to give the vote of thanks mm hello okay थैंक यू मैडम थैंक यू मैडम थैंक यू फॉर दिस वंडरफुल टॉक टू द डॉक्टर एस पटनायक एक्चुअली वी डिड नॉट एक्सपेक्ट दिस माने लेक्चर रियली दिस वाज अ वेरी वंडरफुल एंड इंटरेस्टिंग आल्सो देयरफॉर आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द स्कूल ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स जीएमयू थैंक यू सर एंड वी आर वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू आवर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर professor atanu kumar patti for his presence in spite of his busy schedule he and he has given some time for this talk and we all so thank full for, for him because 
he has allowed this uh, to organize this event hala thank you sir though he uh, still he is not there still and he is very very thank you sir we are now thankful to our esteemed register sri girish chandra singh for providing all facility and arrangement to conduct this event along with we also thankful to our esteemed deputy, deputy register dr uma charan pati for cooperating in all and every way to make this event as grand success and without the kind support and help of research scholars academic section establishment section control by examination this event could not be possible therefore we on behalf of school of mathematics thanks to everybody every members of the each department it gives me immense pleasure to extend thanks to all the hod and faculty of this university for their timely help and suggestion and we also we are also thankful to all the faculty members outside this university especially dr niharanjan satpati dr savita sahu professor srinivasan k srinivasan we are very much thankful to, to them who has joined this mane talk and make it made, made it grand success now without the help of and cooperating of this faculty members of this department this it is not possible to conduct such a beautiful event therefore i extend thanks to all my faculty members teaching and non teaching everybody to help to conduct this event as a grand success now we also extend thanks to all the members of the technical team system manager for their help and cooperation now at the last but not the least we also gives thanks to all the participants such as students research scholars from this university and the outside this university who have joined this event and made it grand success so without their participation this event would not be success therefore i would like to thanks to everybody thank you sir thank you sir once again